everybody. Welcome to week three of online learning. Um, today we are learning about the present perfect tense. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right. So just a reminder, we have a newsletter that comes out every single week. It's posted on the Berkeley website and the Berkeley um, Facebook page. So make sure you take a look at that. And if your parents um, haven't looked at that, um, let them take a look at that as well. We have translations in English, Spanish, and Arabic, so it should be accessible to most people. Um, but if you have any questions, of course, just let us know. Um, like last week, just make sure that you are following all these steps. Um, the biggest thing that applies to our YouTube channel is follow the YouTube channel, number one, and then complete a YouTube lesson for all of the fifth grade teachers um, by this Thursday. Um, and that is nine teachers. And these are the teachers down here um, that are in the fifth grade. We actually have the most teachers out of all the grades. So it is a little bit more work, but I guarantee you that all the lessons are totally awesome and um, you'll learn a lot from them. All right, for the materials for today, you are going to just need the YouTube comment section. And I also put down here that um, for our first week, if you are doing lessons with me, um, I had you take notes and write on a note catcher. Um, but for this specific lesson, you will not need to take a picture of your note catcher and submit it. All you will need to do is just post your answers in the comment section. However, I encourage you to have like a sheet of paper or just like whatever you can write on right next to you because this topic is a little bit more complicated than what we've been practicing. And um, it's important for you to keep track of the things that we're gonna be talking about in this lesson. So if you haven't already, just go ahead and pause the video, get a sheet of paper and a pencil and just have that to the side. All right, for your do now, and you can submit this do now in the YouTube comment section. So we have been kind of, if you have been watching the news, um, there's a lot of uh, talk about what the government is doing during this coronavirus. Um, and you've probably gotten the sense that the government is very important in this country, um, especially these people that we call congressmen, um, congresswomen, or senators. So for this today's do now, I want to talk about like if you were a congresswoman or a senator or a congressman or a senator, um, what are some things that you might do? So just to think about this, congressmen or women um, and senators are people who work in the government and help make laws. Um, so these are a few um, senators down here. If you want to, you can look them up. Um, Whenever you want to, you can just type in Senator from Tennessee or Senator from Georgia or Maryland or wherever you want to look at them up. Um, and these are people who are very important because they help make the laws that kind of uh, govern this country. So if you were a congressman or woman or senator, what law would you create? So go ahead and pause the video and just type a response and drop that in the comment section. All right, so for today's learning targets, you will be able to identify and use the present perfect tense in your writing. All right, so before we talk about the present perfect tense, there are a few things that you need to know. Um, so there's some old terms and some new terms that you may have learned about before, but we're just gonna go over them so we're all on the same page. All right, so the first one is Subjects. So we've talked about subjects. Um, if you were in my class, um, we've talked about in our juicy sentences, what's the subject? Um, so a subject could be a noun, a proper noun, um, or pronouns. So pronouns are um, words that replace um, proper nouns and nouns. So this includes I, she, he, they, him, things like that. All right, and then you're also gonna to need to know what a helping verb is. So you might have learned about this in other grades. We haven't really talked about helping verbs in um, fifth grade, but helping verbs are verbs that are used with a main verb to help express an action. So these um, verbs include has, have, am, are, may, would. 
So these words or these helping verbs can be used by themselves, but they're often used with other verbs to help them express whatever action. So for example, in, um, oh, we also have past participle. These are just like the past tense of um, common verbs. So for example, teach and then taught or played, play, and then the past tense will be played, drink, drank. And then the helping verb would be placed with this main verb right here um, to help express the action of that verb. So it could be, I have taught or I have played. So these are the um, terms that you need to make sure that you understand because our entire lesson, I'm going to be referring back to these terms. So if you need to write them down, pause the video and write them down. Um, otherwise, let's move on. All right, so, so how do we create this thing that we call the present perfect tense? So like we were talking about, you're going to need a subject and then you're going to add it to a helping verb. And the only helping verbs that we're going to use for the present perfect tense are have and has. We're not gonna be using other ones like, let me show you before, um, am, are, may, would, we're not using those. We're just using have and has. And then you're going to add it to a main verb in the past participle. So all of these things together create the present perfect tense. So let's take a look at an example. For example, we have only eaten pizza today. So we would be our subject. Let me get my writing tool out so we can draw some lines. So we is the subject. Have, of course, is our helping verb. And then eaten would be our main verb in the past participle. So these are the things that we're going to need to make the present perfect tense. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at when do we use the present perfect tense? And this all relates to time. So there's two things. There's finished time, which is time that is completely finished or has just completely um, finished. Um, this could be relate to something that happened yesterday, something that happened last week, last month, time that has um, completely finished. Or it could relate to unfinished time. So this is time that has started in the past and continues in the present. So things that are um, related to what's happening today, this week, or this year. So when we use the present perfect tense, we're actually using the unfinished time. So that's time that has started in the past and continues to the present. So let's take a look at some examples of what this might look like. So for example, something that has already finished would be Miss Coatney taught a different group of fifth graders last year. So Miss Coatney had a different um, class last year. So she started teaching them and then she also she finished teaching those students. So that would be an example of finished time. Unfinished time, if it relates to Miss Coatney, Miss Coatney has taught for four years. So this means that she started teaching in the past. So she started teaching four years ago and she continues to teach today. So remember, we're using our present um, perfect tense. So this would be our subject here, Miss Coatney. Our helping verb has, and then our main verb is taught. All right, let's look at another example. I met my best friend seven years ago. So seven years ago, I met my best friend. That's something that started, it finished seven years ago. I only met her once. But an example of unfinished time as it relates to someone's best friend would be, my best friend and I have known each other for seven years. That means we met each other in the past and we continue to know each other in the future, um, in the present and continuing into 
the future. Let's take a look at another one, our last example. Yesterday, a man contracted the coronavirus. This means that yesterday, at a specific instance, he contracted the coronavirus. That means that something that happened to him yesterday, and he can't contract it today because he contracted it yesterday. And an example of unfinished time would be this year, thousands of people have contracted the coronavirus. This means that they people have contracted it in the past and people continue, un, continue unfortunately, they continue to contract the coronavirus in the present and possibly in the future as well. All right, so this is just a quick quiz. What you're going to do is just on that sheet of paper that you're taking notes on, you are going to write one sentence using the present perfect tense. And when you write the sentence, you're actually going to annotate the sentence. You're going to put an S over your subject, an HV over your helping verb, and an MV over your main verb. So this is an example. Um, so I have, we have only eaten pizza today. That means I'm going to put a S over my subject, a HV over my helping verb, and an MV over my main verb. And like I said before, you do not need to um, submit this in the comment section. This is just notes for you. So go ahead and pause the video and answer this question on a sheet of paper. All right, and another way that we can use the present perfect tense is if we're describing life experiences or accomplishments. So for example, life experiences, um, something that's been happening to me um, or that, that has happened in the past is I have been to many Grizzlies games. So this is something that I've done um, so I have been to many Grizzlies games or they have visited Mexico many times. Um, and you can also kind of flip this and do a negative version as in she has never eaten chicken. So that's not been her experience. Um, and then we can also talk about accomplishments that people have accomplished. So an accomplished would be people have walked on the moon. So that is something that's been an accomplishment for people or people have not traveled to Mars yet. So that's actually kind of a, not an accomplishment, but we can use the present perfect tense to describe how that's not been an accomplishment just yet. All right, so stop again. And then you're also gonna do this quick quiz. Like I said before, you do not need to submit this to the comment section. This is just for you. So you are going to write one sentence using the present perfect tense. Um, and um, this sentence has to describe a life experience that you had. So if you can't remember what the life experiences are, kind of go back a little bit in the video and look at those examples of life experiences. And like the other quiz, you're going to label your sentence with an S, an HV, and an MV. So go ahead and pause the video and do this quick quiz. All right. And then the last thing that we're going to talk about today is the present perfect tense in the negative form. So for example, we have positive sentences and negative sentences. Now, when you think of positive and negative, you're thinking of like good and bad, but that's not really when we're talking about like grammar and sentences, it's not really good or bad. It's just something that has happened versus something that hasn't happened. So a positive sentence would be, I have been to many Grizzlies games. And then the negative sentence, I would use either not or never. So it would be, I have not been to many Grizzlies games. So it's just the negative version. I have not experienced that in my life. So, or you can also say they have visited Mexico. So this is something that has happened, happened to these people. Or you can use the negative version is they have never visited Mexico. So this is um, an experience that they have not had. All right, so let's review. So we've been talking about for this video, the present perfect tense. And we have two ways or two reasons that we use the present, present perfect tense. We use it for unfinished time. So time that has started in the past and continues into the present. 
So for example, Miss Coatney has taught for four years. That means Miss Coatney started teaching in the past and she continues to teach into the present and the future. And then we can also use the present perfect tense for life experience or accomplishment. So for example, and a life experience would be they have visited Mexico many times. And then how do we form the present perfect tense? We have a subject plus a helping verb has or have and a main verb in the past participle. So for example, we would be the subject, have is the helping verb, only eaten is the main verb in the past participle, pizza today. All right, so for your exit ticket, you have two parts to your exit ticket today. So make sure if you're doing part one, you just write down your answer and don't submit it yet. And then once you complete part two, then you can submit it into the comment section. So for exit ticket number one, you are going to find how many present perfect tense verb pairs can you find? So I'm just gonna read this paragraph and you're going to keep track of how many that you have found. So it says, tomorrow will be the first day of sixth grade. Ever since kindergarten, I have attended Berkeley, but this year I will be attending collegiate. I have been so nervous about collegiate since I got in. I have waited for years to go to middle school, but now I'm not so sure. Have I prepared enough? Have I read enough books? Enough worrying, I tell myself. With hard work and perseverance, I have everything I need to succeed. So how many present perfect tense verb pairs did you find in this paragraph? So write that down and then this is going to be your exit ticket number two. You're not just going to find them, you're actually going to write present perfect tense in a paragraph or in a story of your own. So for your exit ticket number two, you're going to write a three to five sentence story using at least two verb pairs in the present perfect tense. And you're also going to put that in the comment section. So once you have done that, um, you are completely finished with today's lesson. Um, so make sure you put both of your exit tickets in the comment section. Make sure you also have your do now in the comment section and I'll make sure to respond to those this week. So have a good rest of your week.